Remember being a kid and watching a cool action film like X-Men Origins Wolverine? You'd see something a character does and you'd think to yourself about how cool that is and how badly you wish you could do cool things in real life. And then remember that because you're not an action hero you can't do cool action hero things? Well, the other day I had that thought process whilst I was sat watching John Wick and then I realised that because I'm not John Wick I can't do cool John Wick things. But now I have video games, so at least I could still be John Wick in a game if I wanted to. But just holding down a button to be John Wick like this. Just isn't satisfying. No, I wanted to be John Wick. I wanted to feel his spirit flow through me, but didn't want to go so far as to get my pets killed and have my super awesome cool car be stolen. Luckily, thanks to VR, I can try to be John Wick without having to experience the pain and effort he goes through. So I decided to get John Wick, the VR Chronicles for its John Wickness. But something about it just isn't right. Yeah, it feels like the world of John Wick with the hotels and all, but the fighting just felt like a VR shooting range rather than actual combat. I think the biggest issue is that you just don't feel like the boogeyman playing it. The biggest reason I think is the lack of hand-to-hand -hand combat with quick takedowns and flashy reloading. Now I understand VR has limitations, but you can't feel like a character that does this just by doing this. Feeling underwhelmed by the obvious choice, I decided to find the most John Wick feeling VR game that I possibly could. After a little bit of thought, I came up with five games I thought could fill the position of a proper John Wick VR experience. Blade and Sorcery, Boneworks, H3 VR, Onward and Sirento. The big reason for choosing these games over others is that they all have gunplay and the ability to kill with knives and or fists etc. Finally, before I can start playing I need a scoring system to determine a winner. Because complex scoring systems are difficult, each game will just be given a score between 5 and 1 based on the following categories of gunplay, close quarters, movement and wick style. There will also be a bonus round for anything that I think is cool but can't be its own category. Kicking things off with gunplay. Here, we are just looking for the guns to be satisfying and smooth as hell to use. So sounds and the guns feeling like they actually have weight is very important, as well as how easy it is to switch weapons and reload, as John does a lot of this in the films. And somewhat unsurprisingly, in last place for this category, it's got to be Blade and Sorcery because the game doesn't actually have guns in it. Luckily, there is a mod that can be used to add guns to the game, albeit with a bit of a limited selection. The guns themselves are pretty weightless, sound like guns from a bad action film, and reloading is just done by pressing a button. No discredit to the modder though, as it is free, and putting guns in a melee-based VR game, I would assume, is not easy. I will also have the mod I used linked in the description below. What I would say is that the more I got into playing playing like John Wick, the less the guns themselves actually mattered. What is an issue though is the weapon switching. I was constantly picking up a pistol from my hip and then dropping it when trying to put it back, causing much frustration. You are also limited to just two weapons, as you can't put small items such as knives and guns on your back. At this point, I am also just going to quickly add that during some testing, I found the modder actually created a John Wick level, and that's just awesome, but I'll talk a bit more about that at the end. Coming second to last for gunplay is Sirento. Now this isn't because Sirento's guns don't feel good to use, they just don't feel very wick-like. They have no weight to them and there's no control over the reload so you can't do anything fancy. Having said that, the auto reloads are very smooth and the sounds are very satisfying. One good thing about Sirento that it has going for it is there is a great selection of weapons to kill your enemies with. The most wick-like being shotguns, pistols and a couple of rifles as well. As you can't drop weapons, the switching is also pretty painless with the biggest issue being you have so many weapons on you at any one time that I was constantly grabbing the wrong thing. Having so many weapons does mean you always have the right weapon to deal with the situation though, even if you do end up bringing a shotgun to the sniper fight. However, the biggest issue for Sorrento is the guns just are very futuristic and don't suit the John Wick look at all. Third for gunplay is Onward. Onward's gunplay is by far the most realistic of all the games and that comes with goods and bads. The goods are that the guns have weight, sound great and are very satisfying to use, but they are clunky, the reloads are slow, especially for shotguns where the shells are individually loaded. 
Another big strong point for the gunplay and onward is weapon customization and variety. There is a great variety of weapons, all with different sights, grips, lasers and lights to choose from, giving you a really tactical feel. By far, onward's biggest issue though is the weapon switching. I dropped so many guns, knives and syringes on the map that it honestly felt like I was setting up a treasure hunt like some kind of evil Easter Bunny. Second is Boneworks with its strong and satisfying as hell shooting. Guns are loud, have weight to them and a feel just great to use. Boneworks also gets extra points for its reloading mechanics as it's the only game on the list that allows you to take the mag out of a gun by hitting it with another mag, which can create some pretty whisk-esque moments. However, the trade-off for this is that you can't manually eject mags out of the gun with just one hand, but overall that doesn't actually hurt the experience too much. Boneworks' biggest drawback with the guns is the lack of variety and the kind of samey feel between them. They do have different sounds, but they just feel too similar. On the plus side, a few of the guns on offer are very wick-like, with some cool attachments. Weapon switching in this game isn't great though, as it requires you to carefully put weapons in underarm holsters, and being slightly off when storing weapons can mean you just end up throwing guns and knives all over the place. First for gunplay is H3VR. The gunplay itself isn't leagues above anything else, and I would actually say the way the weapons feel is closer to Onward than anything else. However, what it does have going for it is an insane amount of weapon variety and customization. Now granted, this isn't the most important thing when being John Wick, but you do feel like you are in the Continental speaking to the weapons expert. Good afternoon, Mr. Wick. Glock 34 and 26. Contoured grips, flared magwell for easier reloads, and I know you'll appreciate the custom porting. What's next? I need something robust. Precise. Robust. Precise. AR-15. 11.5 inch, compensated with an iron bonded bolt carrier. Trigicon AccuPoint with 1.6 magnification. Dessert. Dessert. The finest cutlery, all freshly stamped. Sights, grips, suppressors, lights, lasers, launchers, rail adapters, and even flags can all make your weapons just feel cooler to use. The guns themselves all sound different and feel great to shoot, with the reloading feeling realistic but also forgiving enough to still be fun. Weapon switching is also perfect, as the guns just snap back to your body when you drop them so you won't go around just dropping weapons everywhere like in Onward. What I would say is that you do have a lot of weapon slots, almost too many, as if you fully kit yourself out, you can feel like a GTA character and are constantly grabbing the wrong thing when trying to reload your gun. This creates some pretty awkward reload encounters, trying to fit things where they're obviously just not going to fit. Anyone who has ever played a punchy game in a somewhat small VR area will tell you that it has some issues. The main one being there's a lot of this. which can hurt, break immersion, and in the case of my old VR controllers, cost a lot of money. The second main issue is there's no physical connection to what you're actually punching, so it doesn't feel like you're hitting something unless it's the wall. This means your brain has to work extra hard to fill in the rest of the immersion for you, so smooth gameplay is a must for realistic punching, otherwise it feels like a stop motion video, and that does not make you feel like a badass. On this subject, given that I have to be attached to a computer with a wire, as well as the fact I'm not actually a trained assassin, I am limited to punches and grabs for melee combat. Is doing this would likely result in a very expensive and horrific VR injury so bad it might make it onto the local village Facebook group. Beyond last for close quarters is Onward. It was pretty simple as the only melee weapon you have is a knife. You can't punch and trying to get knife kills is virtually impossible. You just can't get close enough to people in combat to knife them with the only successful knife kills I made being on completely oblivious enemies from behind.
Doing slightly better for melee, we have Sirento. Like Onward, you can't punch, but you do at least get to choose what sword you use. Sirento's biggest issue with melee is that you just don't feel like you're actually stabbing anything. People just kind of die, and there's no real force behind it. Like with its guns, the sword is pretty futuristic, and not at all wick-like. However, at least in this game, melee is still a viable option, making it 100% better than Onward. <laughs> Coming in third for close combat, it's H3VR. The melee weapons in this game have actual weight and physics when stabbing, unlike with the guns, there is an insane amount to choose from. For extra tactics, you can even put a sight on your knife if you want to. You still can't punch, but you can hit people with the gun, so you always at least have the option of close combat. Here's the thing with H3VR though, you are fighting sausages as opposed to people and all the enemies will always have guns, so getting close enough to kill with a knife can be difficult, but is still viable with a bit of patience. Coming in with a joint first place, we have Blade and Sorcery and Boneworks. Now I made this may seem like a bit of a cop out, but just listen a second. In a sentence, Blade is a bit more OTT, whereas Boneworks is a bit more same. What I mean by this is in Blade, you can completely throw people into another fucking dimension, making you feel like a massive badass. However, the more realistic physics in Boneworks allow for some more wick-like experiences. So it depends on whether you want to launch people or wick people. Despite their differences, both games actually allow just straight up punching people and hitting them with guns, which is probably what makes the biggest difference when feeling like a badass hitman. Grabbing someone by the arm and shooting them in the knee, then the face, is some true John Wick style, so both games get a massive leg up with that. One small thing that Blade and Sorcery has going for it is the ability to actually disarm people by punching and stabbing guns out of their hand, as well as its amazing throwing knife physics, allowing for things like this. Overall, this is going to be a pretty quick round as a lot of VR games have similar movement and VR movement in general is pretty subjective, but there are some things quickly worth covering about it. In last, we have Sirento. The movement is good, but doesn't suit the things you need to do to be John Wick. It relies a lot on the teleport style of movement, so you don't get much control over your movement, so you can't get up close to people very easily. Whilst there is technically strafing controls, they are slower than the world's response to COVID and therefore completely useless. <laughs> I will give credit to all the different types of movement, including jumping, sliding, wall running, wall rebounding, and if you want to make yourself ill, backflipping in VR. Onward, Boneworks and H3VR are coming out in a joint second, third and fourth for its simple but workable movement. You use the thumbstick or touchpad to move and you click it into sprint and that's about it. It's good enough if not a little basic as there is no fine movement control. Onward gets a very small bonus for the way it changes speed depending on your gun position but then proceeded to lose that bonus when I realised I couldn't get over a few bricks. Coming in at first for movement, it's Blade and Sorcery. Like the others, you use a thumbstick or touchpad to move at a walking pace, but you can then swing your arms as fast or slow as you like to increase movement speed, allowing you to finally control your speed. Also, as this actually feels like you are running, kinda, you get some bonus points for immersion, despite the fact you look like an absolute idiot. Moving on to the final round, Wick style is basically how much you feel like John Wick playing the game. This again is pretty subjective as everyone feels different when playing games, but I've got to have a final round and there are definitely some things that are just straight up bad for a wannabe John Wick game.
In last place for Wick style, we have Onward, for the simple reason that outside of the good gunplay, you can't do anything cool, as the game is just too slow paced. After you run out of ammo, you then have to go through the clunky, albeit realistic reloading, or attempt to switch to your pistol or knife without throwing your guns everywhere. Even if you get your knife out, the chances of you getting a knife kill are virtually zero, especially in multiplayer. In second to last, we have H3VR. The movement is good and you can get close enough to melee and kill with a knife, but the reloading, like onward, is too slow to really pull off some proper wicking. As sausages have no limbs, you also can't shoot or grab people, meaning there is no disarming or less lethal shots. However, headshots do still deal more damage, allowing for some cool one-shot kills. Despite this, with some clever timing, you can still get some pretty meaty takedowns on the sausages but it's just not quite the same as shooting people. In third, we got Sirento for the simple reason that despite its movement and gunplay not being very John Wicky, you do feel like a badass future John Wick with the wall running, jumping, sliding, and backflipping with your shotguns and swords. Not too much else to say, you feel cool and stylish, but just not in the most authentic John Wick way. In second, it's got to be Blade and Sorcery. In the right situation, you really do feel like John Wick. Cool headshots, shooting people in the limbs, disarming and punching your way through waves of gun and knife wielding AI really does put you in his shoes. And my God, do you think you look cool doing it? Biggest issue goes back to the gunplay. No manual reloads means you don't quite get the John Wick flair and it does hurt the experience just enough from allowing it to take the top spot for style. And finally, in first place for Wick style, it's Boneworks. Basically, everything I said about Blade and Sorcery, but with Tactical as Hell manual reloads, allowing for the coolest Wick experience going. This isn't so much a category, but I'm just putting anything in here that I feel like deserves extra points but can't be its own separate part of the video. Here we have two points each for Blade and Sorcery, Boneworks and Sirento. The ability to go slow motion makes you feel like you have super quick reactions. This allows you to create some really Wick-esque moments within the game. Slow motion also gives you the ability to time things more precisely, giving you more accuracy with shots and stabs. Two points here to Onward and four points to H3VR for its insane amount of customizability. Adding silences, scopes and grips to your gun makes you feel a surprising amount more badass than you would actually think. Also, it's pretty rare to see John without some kind of attachment on his gun, so it's only fair that we take this into account when trying to find the most John Wick-like VR game. Finally, we have two points going to Blade and Sorcery, or more the guy who made the weapons mod for Blade and Sorcery. Just having a mode to make you feel like John Wick is definitely point worthy. Also, I did actually try this mode and it is pretty fucking chaotic and loud and confusing and I died a lot, but my god is it still really good fun. So, taking everything into account, we now have our results. Now, just remember, this testing isn't scientific and it's all pretty subjective, but nonetheless, we do have to come to some kind of a conclusion. So in a very dead last, we have Onward. Good guns, but everything else about it makes for a terrible John Wick game. Impossible meleeing, slow movement, and awkward weapon handling means it gets what it deserves. Absolutely fucking nothing. Just above it, we have Sirento. Now this game could be a cool John Wick game if John Wick was set in the future, but unfortunately John Wick isn't set in the future. The weapons are cool and the movement is quick, but the lack of satisfying melee kill potential just doesn't feel very Wick-like.
In third, we have H3VR. This game's saving grace is its weapon customization and somewhat satisfying melee killing, but it just falls short of others in terms of close quarters engagements. The knifing is satisfying, but last time I checked, John doesn't kill sausages, so unfortunately it can't take the top spot. However, I still can't ignore the amount of effort that went into the customization and weapon variety for slaughtering those sausages. And in a surprise to no one who can do basic maths, we have a tie for first between Boneworks and Blade and Sorcery. Both have a lot going for them, with Blade offering better melee and movement, and Boneworks being better for gunplay. It really is such a close call, but leaving it on a tie feels like a waste of my time. So, I'm gonna give it to Boneworks on a technicality. Anyone who has seen John Wick 3 will remember this scene. Well, this works really well in Boneworks and is very satisfying, so if I have to choose a winner, then it has got to be Boneworks. Well, I would like to thank anyone who made it to the end of the video and hope this helps if you are ever finding yourself in the most first world issues as to what VR game feels the most John Wick like. If you enjoyed, drop a like on the video and consider subscribing, as well as clicking the little bell icon to be notified in another million years when I upload again, as it helps massively. If you have a comment, you know where that goes. Feel free to discuss John Wick and VR down in the comments, and in the words of his victims, 